Yeah, I, I wouldn't say blues is about triumph, though. Blues is about resistance. Blues is about overcoming. It's about prevailing. It's about persisting. But because it's tragic comic, there's no triumph, as it were. Uh, you see, as, 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 as a blues-inflicted Christian, the cross is at the center of the blues. Resurrection is at the center of the gospel. Now, my blues brothers and sisters, they don't necessarily go with the resurrection, but they go with the cross. Blind Willie Johnson, one of the greatest geniuses in the history of American civilization, when he wrote, dark was the night, cold was the ground. That's his meditation on the crucifixion of Jesus as a blues man, so he doesn't sing a word. He moans and groans and hums and grits because there's no language that comes close to that catastrophe. And the blues is about catastrophe. It ain't about problems. That's America and the deodorized discourse of we got problems. No, the blue is concerned with the funk. And we have catastrophes. See, so the, the black problem in America is not a problem, it's a catastrophe visited on black people. The women's problem ain't a problem of sisters of all colors, it's a catastrophe visited on women and so forth. On indigenous people, they didn't have a problem called red people. They had catastrophes visited on red folk. But it was black people and our genius. Not all of us, but the blues men and women who had the courage to love and tell the truth and bear witness. They didn't necessarily triumph. Black people ain't triumphed. All the folk in the prison industrial complex, all the folk in dealing with New Jim Crow, all the folk dealing with dilapidated housing, disgraceful school system, unemployment, depression levels of underemployment and so forth. Ain't no black triumph. It's black smiles, black styles, black resistance, black coping, black wrestling the way Jacob wrestled with the angel of death in the midnight hour in the 32nd chapter of Genesis. Came up with a new name but wounded. Blues said, here's the truth about your wounds. Here's the truth about your bruises. Here's the truth about your scars. Are you going to come up with new energy, with new name, a new song, and most importantly, what sits at the center of the blues? Finding your voice. If you're just going to be an echo, then you can't sing the blues. You better find your voice, which means come to terms with your own wounds and scars. Back to the genius name, Brian Willie Johnson. The story, mama gives birth, he's born, he dies. Precious woman, another precious black woman, dead. Mother, his father remarries. Gets caught doing something he shouldn't be doing. The woman takes the lie, gonna throw it on the husband, end up throwing it on little precious Willie Johnson, so he goes blind. And for the next 40 some years, that brother sang a level of sublime blues that the world has yet to fully appreciate. But B.B. King appreciates it. I, I, I come along, you know, in the 60s and 70s. So the blues takes various forms. The great Mary Barakum talks about this in his classic blues people. I mean, that's one of the starting points of any discussion about the blues. His brother Barack, he's Leroy Jones then. That's what his mom and daddy called him. But he had a new name himself. But he understands the blues at the deepest level. So I come along in the 60s and 70s where the blues for me had to do with indescribable geniuses like this brother born in Hamlet, North Carolina, grew up in Philadelphia named John Coltrane. There's another brother born in Chicago named Curtis Mayfield. Another brother grew up in Vallejo named Sly Stone. And then we can go on and on, the Nina Simones and the Aretha Franklin and this brother right here. Look in his eyes. Martin Luther King Jr. understood the blues, but he had a Christian infliction to it. You see, he understood the blues. Catastrophe, but compassion responds to catastrophe. You see, B.B. King says, nobody loves me but my mama. She might be jiving too. That's catastrophe. 
every force in the world, cosmic, physiological, intellectual, spiritual, moral, is against you, but you got one person in your corner called your precious mama. What is she jiving? Even Sophocles and Antigone can't deal at that level. But what does B.B. King do? He got a smile with style, with a little help from Lucille. And he touches your soul. And he allows you to keep on, keep it on. Pass it on to Curtis. Keep on pushing. Pass it on to Curtis. Keep on moving. Pass it on to Daylight Soul. Ain't no stopping us now. Pass it on to Max Fadden. It's a tradition. It's a love train that Curtis Mayfield talked about. People get ready. And the OJs talked about in the love train. And the caravan of love that the Isley brothers, and Jasper, the brother-in-law, saying about. It's the richest tradition in the modern world. The reason is because right now, everybody dealing with catastrophe, the catastrophe of the environment and nature, the catastrophe of the greed on Wall Street, the catastrophe of cowardly brothers coming home and beating their wives and girlfriends of domestic violence, the catastrophe of being spit on because you're gay, lesbian, or transsexual, or bisexual. It's the catastrophe of being poor and nobody giving a damn in power. That's a catastrophe. Everybody has to come to terms with the blues. And then when your mama dies and her body's in, in the coffin, that's a catastrophe. That's not a problem. You're going to have to learn to live with it or you're going to go crazy. Or when your girlfriend betrays you and your boyfriend tells lies to stay away from you, that's a catastrophe in your heart. It's called heartbreak and heartache. How you going to deal with it? How you going to sustain yourself? You're going to need some blues music to deal with your blues condition. And I tell you this, see, America, America's not a blues nation. See, America is a uh, adolescent nation. The blues is for grown-ups. That's why there's no blues prodigies. You can't be a blues prodigy. You can't sing the blues at four. You don't know what the hell you're singing about. You can be a mathematical prodigy. You can be a prodigy in classical music like Mendelssohn or Mozart. But you can't be a blues prodigy. Mm -mm. You're going to have to live. You're going to have to suffer. You're going to have to have some pain and hurt in your life in order to sing some blues. The blues produces prisoners of hope. And when you're a prisoner of hope, you look at all the evidence against you and say, I'm going to keep keeping on anyway. I'm going to keep smiling. I'm going to keep loving. I'm going to keep laughing. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep organizing. I'm going to keep mobilizing. All they can do is kill me. And when they shoot me, they can't kill my blues. Because I have my smile on my face, I would have passed it on to the younger generation. Lupe already got it now. Oh, shucks. And then I reached, she got it. Now she's on the run. Oh, shucks. They're going to keep passing it on. They think they can kill us. No, you can kill the individual, you can kill the messenger, you can't kill the blues impulse, you can't kill the blues tradition, you can't kill the refusal to sell out, and give up, and cave in. No, the blues, keep telling the truth, people pick it up. Keep loving, people feel it. Keep singing, people's souls respond. But you got to find your voice, and you want the younger generation to find their voice. And one of the beautiful things, about this project, one of the beautiful things about the work you all are doing is you're keeping this tradition alive. Just know how dangerous it is. It ain't no plaything. Everything's at stake when you talk about the blues. 